Hello, welcome to this first session of Policy and Evaluation in Public Health. This is the Investigate video, which will be followed by an Apply uh, session, where we will look at applying the ideas and theories and thinking that we will be looking at and exploring in this session. So in this session, we're going to look at what is policy, what is healthy public policy, and what is health in all policies. So we're going to discuss, first of all, what policy is. We're then going to look at what healthy public policy and what health in all policies is. Now, there is a difference between the two, but at this stage in your careers, the easiest way is to think of them as pretty similar, as almost the, exactly the same thing. Um, but in reality, healthy public policy is the broader concept. Health in all policies is one approach to developing healthy public policy. Just a note, the yellow slides are key slides. They're useful for thinking about the assignment, um, but it's not about just copying them. You need to think about them. You need to read them a couple of times. You need to reflect on what they mean. And essentially, you want to try and analyze them. You want to try and apply them. You want to try and synthesize them. And you want to try and evaluate them. First of all, let's start with some background context about what is public health. Now, why? Why do you want to uh, examine what is public health? Because you already all know what it is. Yeah. The reason we want to know what public health is, because knowing what public health is tells us what we want to achieve through policies. Yeah. If we understand what public health is about, then we can decide, you know, what kinds of policies, what kinds of approaches can we use to try and change policies? Yeah. And in what areas? So what is policy? Again, we need to understand what is policy because if we don't understand what policy is, then how can we link it to public health and how can we make change Yeah, if we don't understand what the notion, the idea of policy is? So what is public health? Well, public health is the science and art of promoting and protecting health and well-being, preventing ill health and prolonging life through the organised efforts of society. Yeah, so there's three parts, isn't it? It's about promoting health and protecting health. That's one part. It's about preventing ill health or disease. And it's about prolonging and extending healthy life. What we used to talk about in previous uh, modules about life expectancy. And we do that through the actions, the efforts, uh, the way we structure society to improve health and well-being. And policies is, is one organised effort of society. Developing policies, having policies around health and well-being and, and protecting health and well-being uh, is one of the, essentially what the way it says it in this definition, the organised effort. Now, this is a second definition. This is a kind of expanded definition that came uh, uh, has come later uh, by one less. And it's the science and art of promoting and protecting health and well-being, which is exactly the same as the previous definition, preventing ill health and prolonging life through the organised efforts, not just of society, but the informed choices. So it's not just about organised efforts. It's also the choices we make as a society, yeah, which is a, an additional thing uh, that's added by Wanless's uh, definition. And Wanless also then adds the informed choices, not only of society, but organisations, public and private, so businesses as well, communities and community groups, as well as individuals and families. So you can see here it's broadened it out. It's explaining what society is. Society isn't some kind of abstract thing. It's about the organisations, the people, the communities, public and private, voluntary sector and others. And it's the efforts that we take and the choices we make uh, that will help to improve, promote and protect health prevent disease and prolong healthy life. So these are the kind of three domains of public health that we try and work towards and work on as public health professionals. We often work in one area, not all of them. So you've got health protection, health improvement and health services. 
Yeah. So with health protection, it's often about laws and regulations. It's also often about protecting environments and workplaces. And it's also about diagnosing and investigating health problems. And then I'll move on to health improvement first, because that is more often a public health role than health services. So in health improvement, we're about informing, educating and empowering. You know, that's about running health promotion programs, educating people about diet and physical activity. And then we also monitor the health status of populations. And that's what we did in assessing population health. We look at what the current health status of communities are. We look at the determinants of health, uh, the indices of uh, deprivation uh, to look at health inequalities. And we also aim to mobilize communities so that we get communities on our side. We get communities to do the work, you know, to support themselves and to work with us to change behaviours and to improve health and well-being across the whole population. And in terms of health services, what our aim is as public health people is we help to make sure that there's good quality health people, we've got a good workforce, we are developing that workforce, we've got the right numbers of doctors and nurses and allied health professionals. We also evaluate health services to make sure that you know they're working well and that could include health inequalities. Are poorer people accessing health services less than uh, people who are well off? Um, are health services working for ethnic minorities or other communities? Is it working for children and older people? And uh, th for, thirdly, it links, we link into what people's needs are. Again, we've talked about that in uh, previous modules about doing needs assessments. So this is it, where we look at the needs in terms of health services of people, you know, whether that's individuals, families, communities, or the population as a whole. And lastly, uh, it's not just alongside health services, but as we've talked about laws and regulations, they're also policies. Laws and regulations are a type of policy. And we make policies for health services, but we also make policies for health improvement. So that seven isn't just one area and only linking into health services. It actually links into all three areas. So you might see this diagram, but remember, you have to analyze this diagram. Yeah, some of these some of these diagrams don't often work. If you analyze them and think about them, you realize, hang on. Why? Why are they just talking about policies and plans for health services? What about policies and plans for health improvement? What about policies and plans for health protection? And you're absolutely right. Yeah, they do occur. So you do have policies in all three areas and you can have laws and regulations again, not just in health protection, but in all three areas. More often it is around health protection and health services that you have laws and regulations, but it's not the only time you can have laws and regulations around health improvement. And lastly, we're not going to talk much about ethics and the use of information, though there is the ethics of policy making, and we may touch on that later. Now, just a reminder, just because we've looked at a definition of health, don't think or, or don't waste your time in writing the definition of public health in your assignment. Yeah, we know what it is. This is background. Yeah, you should already know that from the first year. It's just a reminder, a refresher. Uh, just of what public health is. So don't start it off there. Remember, this assignment is about policy and policy making. This module is about policies and policy making yeah, and healthy public policy. So those are the discussion points and the definitions you, you should be talking about. So let's start with what is policy. So a simple definition of policy is a set of principles that guide decision making or the processes of problems resolution. Yeah. I think the first part of this is a much better definition than the second part, but let's have a look at it. So it's a set of principles that guide decision making. What this definition doesn't tell you is what principles, why is it a set of principles? How does it guide decision making? So actually this, this definition doesn't really tell us, well, it's very simple. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. We actually would have to read wider, maybe go back to the references, the original references to actually understand more clearly what they're talking about. And what does it mean when it says processes of problems resolution? That's a bit better actually now we look at it because it's some kind of process it's some kind of thing that happens in time it's not happening at one point in time it happens over time maybe three months six months a year maybe five years and it's something to do with problems so policies 
are about tackling problems and resolving them in a good way. But again, you, let, you can have a think about it, maybe read the original sources or have a look at other uh, textbooks and articles that may discuss this definition. So you do need to think about it, just put it in there, have a reflection on what does it mean? What is this definition talking about? Let's look at some more complex definitions, but that perhaps explain policy in a much more interesting and more clearer way. So Thomas Dyes says that public policy is whatever governments choose to do or not to do. He argues that failure to decide or act on a particular issue also constitute policy. And now this is quite profound. Think about it. It's not only what governments do or choose to do, but it's what they don't do. So if you don't do something, if a government doesn't do something or a society doesn't do something, that also is a policy. Indirectly, that is a policy. You've created a policy not to do something. So you haven't written it up in a document. You aren't stating it explicitly on the news and on BBC TV, but you are and have created a policy not to do something. Yeah. And then secondly, what about this definition? As you can see, there are many ways of defining policy. So hopefully you, you've taken that from just the fact that I showed you a slide on the, uh, uh, sorry, I showed you a definition on the previous slide and now you already can see a second definition on this slide. So Thomas Dye's definition is a simple one, yeah, about what governments do or don't do. But it also contrasts with the more formal assumption that all policy is made to achieve a particular goal or purpose. So here is a definition, again it's not highlighted strongly, but policy making is about achieving a particular goal or purpose. But Thomas Dye is saying, well actually no, sometimes that there is no goal, sometimes there is no purpose, it's you're choosing not to do something, yeah? But generally policy making is about doing something that achieves some kind of goal or purpose that's beneficial that benefits people in a society. Hopefully all the people, but not always. And this is where health inequalities comes in, where some policies uh, uh, benefit some groups more than others, yeah? So if you have a tax cut, but you're unemployed or on a low income, then the tax cut won't impact on you, yeah? It's not gonna have a beneficial effect on you. But if you're working and well off, then a tax cut will be benefit to you. That doesn't mean a tax cut's wrong, but it means that it benefits one group more than others. Now, some policies support everyone more equally. You know, when we tax smoking, yeah, it's affecting everyone equally. Everybody's paying the same tax, though obviously, it, because we know the background that more people smoke uh, who are poorer or uh, yeah so more more poorer people tend to smoke or continue to smoke that tax does have an impact because obviously it makes it more difficult it costs them more to buy c cigarettes but if they're addicted to it and they can't help themselves what you're actually doing is then taking money away from them the little money they have is taken away by them buying cigarettes yeah, well, we could argue it's a choice, but we know that smoking is addictive. You know, alcohol is addictive. So sometimes you don't have a choice if you're addicted to something. We have a very little choice. So what's the last kind of key definition? Health policy is assumed to embrace courses of action and inaction. Yeah. So again, linking back to Thomas Dye's definition above, that affect the set of institutions, organisations, services and funding arrangements of the health and healthcare system. Now again, looking at this definition, the, I like the first part, but the second part about health and the healthcare system, it doesn't affect just health and healthcare system, it affects the transport system, housing system, education system, leisure system, any kind of system you can talk about. So here they've used a very strong kind of healthcare, hospital, doctors, nurses type of definition. So we can change that. We can talk about health policy is about courses of action and inaction that affect institutions, organisations, services and funding for all types of sectors in society, whether that's the health care system, whether that's the social care system, the leisure system, the education system, the transport system, the housing system, all of these are affected by policy. Yeah. So what types of policies does public health try to influence and change? Well, the policies that it tries to influence and change goes back to that definition of public health and the three domains. So we are trying to change policies 
trying to create laws and regulations and strategies and action plans and programs of activities around health improvement. So we do health promotion activities like Change for Life, for example. We do health protection activities like health and safety in the workplace place or reducing air pollution, reducing noise, reducing chemicals in the air and water and soil. And then thirdly, we look at improving health services so we have improved access. So when do we do fall ill? We have good quality access to affordable health services. Now in the UK it's free, but remember in many countries it's not free. So the affordability is important as well as the availability that is actually being provided and three accessibility yeah can we access it you know can a disabled person can a mum with uh, a, a, a pram and uh, a push chair be able to access that service easily someone who doesn't have a car can they access that service easily yeah and, and it is a, it, it's a well signposted so we act on all of these three domains and we look at it and and, and think about this a bit more in the, the apply session so let's go on to who makes public policies, yeah? Well, lots of people do, but we're going to just break it down initially into two broad types. There's public policies, which are developed by national and local governments. Lots of people may take part, you know, you may have charities, voluntary sector organisations, NGOs getting involved, we can have businesses getting involved, but governments, you know, national or local are the ones who drive policy, uh, policies, who develop laws and regulations. Ultimately, they have to create it. They have to sign off on it, approve it in Parliament or in the local council cabinet. They have to sign off and, de de and then deliver and implement those policies. So governments are key agents in developing public policies. And then the other people who are involved are governance institutions, both regional ones and by regional I don't mean like the northwest or the southwest or the London region I mean continental like European North American Australia South Pacific uh, the Southeast Asia those kinds of regional partnerships and governance institutions and a key one obviously is the European Union which covers most of Western Europe United Nations is a, a governance institution and the agencies within it and for health obviously World Health Organization is a key you know it's a part of the united nations but it's the key leading agency for health across the world internationally so these public policies have a direct effect or affect on people yeah they have a direct affect on people. For example, policies, laws and regulations on the safety of food is important. You know, having good quality chicken, you know, not uh, having salmonella in your meat is really important. Wearing of seat belts is another one. Smoking in public spaces is another one. Uh, rules for managing air pollution from factories bans on advertising for cigarettes on TV, the sugar tax, these are all examples of policies that governments and governance institutions have advocated or created, yeah? It's direct because everyone in a country or an area, if it's a local government uh, that develops a policy, has to do it, yeah? Or it will be affected by it in some way. The second group of people are, are private policy makers, and these are generally private sector businesses and maybe non-governmental organisations, voluntary sector, charities, think tanks. Yeah, These have indirect effects on people. Generally, unless governments take these uh, ideas up and then develop into policies, they don't really affect most people. Unless you use those businesses, you know, use the services that those businesses provide. For example, Kellogg's producing Cocoa Pops or Diageo, uh, a drinks manufacturer, selling sweet alcohol drinks uh, targeting young people uh, through their advertising. That's an example of private companies making a decision to say, we're going to sell sweet cereals targeted at kids that we know kids will like, even though, obviously, I'm sure that all the senior people in Kellogg's know that sweet foods affect people's teeth and really probably having chocolate and cocoa 
in the morning for kids is probably not a good idea really yeah but they're willing to sell it because they think it will sell people will buy it and yes while people can eat, eat cocoa pops at different times of the day yeah it's often eaten by children in the morning yeah okay and the same with drinks yeah most alcoholic drinks are savory they're not very sweet you know there are some types of sweet drinks but often so young people aren't always attracted to them but sweet alcoholic drinks where it feels like fizzy pop that you're drinking so you don't realize the alcohol content until you've had quite a few drinks uh, there has been an issue with it in the past yeah and, and potentially it can be a continuing issue but in the past there was a big issue around these kind of sweet alcoholic drinks targeting young people and there's less of that kind of advertising now and this is indirect because we don't have to buy these things you know I, I don't have to buy cocoa pops you don't have to buy it for your kids yeah but we can be persuaded by advertising or through advertising the pestering power of children your know, children see the ad for cocoa pops they see that nice jingle and that monkey and they go yeah yeah we want it so next time you're in the shops in the supermarket and the kids are with you they will be pushing you to buy it yeah so it becomes very difficult uh, to say no and the same with uh, sweet alcoholic drinks for young people you know the advertising makes it look cool your friends are all drinking it so you start drinking it because you think it's a good cool thing to do So the, but the focus of public health really is on public policies. We don't really focus on private policies because we don't have much of an impact. The biggest impact we can have is on public policies. The more the people who are likely to listen to us are national and local government governance institutions like uh, uh, the European Union and the World Health Organization. So we can make an impact by changing the minds of politicians, uh, civil servants in government, you know, people who work in councils and in government departments, we more likely to change their mind than potentially private sector businesses who often, not always, but often are driven by profits as the key driver. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but that often is an overriding factor. So, you know, they, they, they have to make a profit. So sometimes they're not always going to do the public health thing. Yeah, the healthy thing that they should do for the public health, they may not always do it unless they're pushed to do it because of policies, laws and regulations. So sometimes we have to force private sector organisations to do things by changing public policy. We have to push uh, uh, people gently to go in the right direction about changing their diets again through policies that might impact on supermarkets, how they show food labelling, for example. So we're not forcing people to not eat salty foods or high fat foods they can buy it but if we put a label on it they're more likely to look at that red label potentially and say oh well i'm not really i don't think that's a good idea for me to have so much fat look it's showing as red so that's another way of where policy is indirectly promoting health yeah it's not forcing people to buy certain products it's not banning products but it's changing people's approach to when they look to buy it they might look at the food label now we know that food labeling isn't that effective but it does help you know uh, for those people who are aware of it and are interested perhaps they've got you know they put on a lot of weight they may look at those kinds of things to 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 you know reduce their sugar salt or fats in their diet so what types of policies are there obviously i've already talked about topics uh, or, or thematic areas or sectors, you know, so you can do transport policies, housing policies, education policies, health care policies, social care policies, public health policies directly that relate to public health, um, uh, leisure policies. Yeah, so there's many areas, cultural arts policies, you know, all of these can have an influence on public health and people's health and well-being. Yeah, but there are essentially two broad categories, analytical types, if you like, of policies yeah and they are hard policies and soft policies so hard policies are legislation and regulations you know that like air pollution act motor vehicle exhaust emissions regulations taxation fines fees yeah those kinds of things where there's a penalty are hard uh, policies where you can be taken to court and sued or whether you can you know it, it becomes a criminal act those are hard policies yeah legislation regulations soft policies are guidance advice and support and they could also be financial benefits you know if you do it will give you a benefit like uh, an example of a soft policy is uh, electric cars isn't it so if you go into central london you've got an electric car you don't have to pay the congestion charge because you have an electric car that doesn't emit so that's a soft policy nobody's forced to buy an electric 
can't. But by making it an incentive, a financial benefit, you may decide to buy an electric car because you're constantly going into central London and rather than going around central London, for you it's better, easier, quicker, or, or more convenient to go through. And then if you have a choice and you have the money, you know, you're happy to buy an electric car to avoid that penalty. So now we move on to what is healthy public policy and health in all policies. As I said, for this module, you can think of healthy public policy and health in all policies as, as the same or, or virtually the same so that you can talk about them as almost the same thing and interchangeably. As I said, I think healthy public policy is the higher level thing. Yeah, it's the broader thing. Health in all policies is one approach to developing healthy public policies. Yeah, but it's the very, it's the key approach, the most important approach that we have at the moment. Yeah. So what is healthy public policy? Now you can see it's a very big, quite a dense definition, right? So it, this will take you much, much longer to think about than the one you see this. And it comes from the Adelaide recommendations in 1988 on healthy public policy. So you can see this is a, quite a long time ago that this uh, definition was created. And so healthy public policy has been going on since the 80s, if not actually the 70s is probably where it originally started in Canada. Healthy public policy is characterised by an explicit concern, so it's it's an open concern. Yeah, we're, we're focused uh, transparently, uh, very clearly on these two things: on health and equity. Yeah, so it's both of them. So remember, equity and inequalities, they are two different things. Inequalities is the differences in health between different groups of people, and equity is whether that difference is fair or unfair. Yeah, if you have a genetic disorder, it's, it's kind of unfair, but it's not really because it, it's not society that made it unfair. So remember, equity is about whether society makes it unfair. Yeah. So while it's not nice to have a genetic disorder, it's not unfair because society didn't make you have that genetic disorder generally. Yeah. So inequalities is the differences in health across people different groups of people and equity is whether that difference is fair or unfair is it caused by government policy is it caused by the way people treat each other in a society yeah so that's important so healthy public policy is where public policy has an explicit concern is explicitly focused on improving health and and improving equity and reducing health inequalities in all areas of policy, whether that's transport, housing, environment, agriculture, yeah, food, retail, leisure, education, in all areas, eh? and by an accountability for health impact. So what does that mean? Accountability for health impact means that then that policy looks at what are the health impacts? Are they positive or negative? So when we implement that policy, they have to be accountable and responsible for it. So if there are negative impacts from that policy, then they should do something about it. So government, local or national, should do something to improve, reduce the negative health impacts, maximise the positive health impacts. So it's about monitoring and evaluating the policy to maximise the benefits and minimise any negatives, particularly on groups of people like poor people or those are already facing disadvantage like ethnic minorities or women yeah or people with disabilities because they may already have lots of problems that they're dealing with so that you don't need to add more problems onto them through your new policy so the main aim of healthy public policy is to create a supportive environment and remember this links back to the ottawa charter and the five approaches in the ottawa charter so it's really about creating supportive environments to enable allow help people to lead healthy lives. Such a policy makes health choices possible or easier for citizens. It makes social and physical environments health enhancing. We make our environments improve health. Yeah, we ensure we've got pavements, we've got parks, we've got greenery, we've got uh, we've got shops close by. We make our environments, both the social and physical environment, in a way that improves everyone's health and well-being. Yeah. And then in the pursuit of healthy public policy, government sectors concerned with agriculture, trade, education, industry and communications need to take into account health as an essential factor 
when formulating policy. So when we do agricultural policy, we do need to think about health and well-being. Yeah, it's not just about growing food as much as possible, making sure farmers are all right and they're getting enough money. These are absolutely important things and making sure we protect the land so we've got agriculture and we can grow things for, you know, 100 years from now. These are all important things, but they also all of these things also link into health and well-being. Yeah, F farmers doing well make sure that they produce high quality foods ensuring that agricultural land is not degraded and you know will continue to provide food for 100 years it has a public health benefit yeah but not doing stuff not growing stuff that's not useful for communities that may have a negative impact because of the way we do agriculture so for example using pesticides in agriculture yet yeah, that has a neg potential negative impact because that can wash into waterways and then uh, affect uh, plant and animal life that we then eat it or maybe affect us directly as human beings because we we wash in that water so we take up those pesticides so this is where while pesticides can be very useful for growing things because it reduces the pests that eat things like um locusts or, or, or parasites and worms and uh, and caterpillars and other things that might eat food and, and birds yeah actually having actually having uh, actually using pesticides uh, sorry has a potential negative effect on human health and well-being and animal health and well-being as well in the wider kind of environment yeah so these sectors should be accountable for the health consequences of their policy decisions so you can see here this bit about accountable for health consequences of their policy decisions links back to that first point here accountability for health impact yeah so it's kind of reflecting the point that it makes in the first sentence in the second sentence by giving a kind of example and clarifying that point about what is it the, the definition uh, really talking about they should pay as much attention to health as to economic considerations now you know very well that you know economic drivers you know providing jobs providing good quality jobs is really important but it shouldn't be at the expense of health and public health and human health yeah or animal and plant health because that often impacts and comes back onto human health and affects human health so it's really important for all policies to think about health as well as the other things that they might be interested in yeah, whether that's agriculture, trade, education, healthcare, whatever. Now let's look at two definitions for health in all policies. Now you can see here I've coloured it in, so you can look at whether the colours, you know, what are the differences between the keywords between this definition here and this definition here, and why is there? What are the similarities? So first of all, if you do a quick scan, you can see here it talks about health and health equity. And that the previous definition did that as well health and equity yeah and then it also talks about public policies across sectors so did the previous one yeah and it avoids harmful impacts which again the previous one did talk about this one talks about systematically while the other one doesn't is not explicit and it talks about synergies as well which again the other one doesn't really talk about here yeah but it does talk about supportive environments and making things life enhancing or health enhancing so what is health in all policies health in all policies this is a world health organization definition is an approach to public policies across sectors that systematically takes into account the health implications of decisions seeks synergies synergies is about uh, working together yeah so we're not saying it has to be, you know what's good for health has a bad effect on on the economy and jobs it should be both we we want an approach that balances both that put, is positive for both things so if we're looking at a number of different areas we should synergize and make things come together so that you know it, it, it it's better than the two things separately yeah and avoids so it seeks synergies and avoids harmful health impacts in order to improve population health and health equity. As a concept, it reflects the principles of legitimacy, accountability, transparency, access to information, participation, sustainability, and collaboration across sectors and levels of government. So let's have a brief look at this. You will need to explore this in more detail and understand it. Legitimacy means people feel it's legitimate, i.e. 
people buy into it yeah and that's not just people outside government like the public it's also people inside government be it, you know politicians your civil servants but pro other professionals in other sectors maybe businesses so we try and be legitimate yeah we try and make sure we're not going to force things onto people we want people to buy into our policies yeah because that's the best way of be having sustainable policies that work and improve people's health you want it to be accountable yeah so if things go wrong people are uh, affected badly or harmed uh, by the policy then you know the policy needs to be accountable the people who are delivering running designing that policy need to look at changing it improving it and remedying any problems that are created by that policy it's got to be transparent and have open access to information that's two things that are together so so basically the policy process of what the policy is about should be transparent everybody should understand it clearly anybody who wants information about the policy should be openly accessible basically policy should not be made behind closed doors hidden yeah only a few people getting involved yeah everybody should be, be able to access information be involved in the process and it should be an open process that everybody can see what's happening and feel that it's a fair process in how that policy was developed yeah participation again links to that transparency access to information that people anyone who wants to stakeholders who want to get involved should be allowed to be involved in the process of developing that policy Sustainability at it, you know, sustainability is a very complex thing in terms of as a concept, but in this context, sustainability is really about long term positive development, yeah, in the sense that the po policy should not die after two years, you know, it should be a long term policy that lasts for 5, 10, 15, 20 years because we've made it like that, that it's a good policy that can last and uh, uh, you know, over time, that can is flexible and adaptable, and that is not going to be, you know, a year from now is stopped and we're not doing it, yeah, because that is not actually going to be useful for public health because we know that many health problems are not short-term problems obesity cardiovascular disease cancer these are not short-term problems they're long-term problems they take a while to appear and they take a while to improve in terms of reducing health risks yeah so often you need three to five years before you're going to see any real change in how people change their behaviors yeah and lastly there should be collaboration across sectors yeah so transport shouldn't be just about transport it's also about the environment it's also about uh, uh, health care it's also about public health and it's also about um, uh, access to goods and services that impact uh, at a wider level for example leisure and recreation it also impacts education you know get transport getting access to a university or a college and having good roads and public transport to that university and college has an impact or school has an impact on education and people you know the education that children and young people and adults receive so you can see here that collaboration across sectors and at all levels of government yeah not just the top level not the middle level all levels of government the different government agencies whether it's national government and local government they should talk regional government they should talk regional agencies they should talk all of all three levels or however many levels there are they should all be talking and discussing you should national government shouldn't force policy onto local government local government shouldn't really go off on its own and do its own thing sometimes it's forced to do it but ideally local and national government are working together and any regional agencies are also working with local and national governments and if there is a regional government then also you know national regional and local governments work together now in the uk we don't really have regional government probably london is the best example so you have local councils in london then you have the london region with the uh, london assembly and the mayor and then you obviously you have national government uh, and some of the areas like manchester and birmingham also have a kind of regional element but often where they've got mayors but often in the UK context, you generally have local government and national government, and there's regional agencies that do activities, but not really regional government. So this is another definition. This is a definition by uh, UK Local Government Association. So this is a UK definition. Health in all policies is an approach to policies that systematically and explicitly take into account the health implications of the decisions we make, targets the key social determinants of health, looks for synergies between health and other core objectives, and the work we do with partners, and tries to avoid causing harm with the aim of improving the health of the population and reducing inequity. So again, you've got health, uh, improving health and reducing equity or inequity, 
and improving equity. Yeah. And then you have something about systematically, which again was in the previous definition uh, of previous definition of health in all policies. It also is about health implications of decisions, but that cuts across all three definitions. It is about being explicit. Again, that's very clear in this one where it talks about transparency and participation. Uh, and also in this one where it talks about explicit. Yeah, so it doesn't really talk about explicit in this definition. And then it talks about explicit in this definition. So you can see there are differences. There are similarities and slight differences between the three things. Again, there's a very strong emphasis on synergies here between health and other people, uh, other sectors. Uh, and same here and again but not here really but it just talks about supportive environments and working across different sectors so it's kind of there but it doesn't use that word so you need to have a think about all these three definitions think about how similar different they are and then think about how you could write this up in your own words that make sense to you and that you understand and also by giving the kinds of examples that I've talked about here to explain these definitions. You can see how long I've taken to explain these three definitions. That's a level of thinking and analysis and reflection we need in your assignments. So the apply session will involve activities that will help you to apply the learning from the investigate session and this investigate video lecture so please look at all the investigate materials and try and do some of them if not all of them and at least you should try and do it in the week try and re-look at it even if you don't get, get through it uh, uh, before the session uh, uh, that we all have thank you very much for listening i hope you enjoyed this um Please write down any questions that you have so we can talk about them in the apply session. And again, you know, just remember to go and review, as I've said, look at the materials that we've developed on Blackboard and you really try and take part and engage with it. And I guess just what one thing will you take away from this? Yeah, what one key thing have you learned? And then is there anything that you haven't understood or you find confusing? Again, write it down. You can put it on the peer support forum. You may put it in the Word documents uh, that will be being shared with students that you can see on Blackboard in the investigate session. And of course, you can raise it in the apply session uh, when you join that. Thank you very much and bye bye.